Thanks, Steve. Uh, as Steve said, my name is Dan Casey. I'm the construction manager for the Grass River Construction Project. Uh, Mike Elsner is here with me tonight. He's really the client. He's representing Arconic. He's the manager of construction uh, for much of uh, many of uh, Arconic's projects, this being one of them. Um, so, as Steve said, we had offered a, uh, a, a meeting, a public meeting to the residents who live up and down the river about a week and a half ago uh, at the Quality Inn. Uh, it uh, interfered with other meetings that were scheduled, so we offered Steve, as well as Tim Courier and folks from the village, uh, to provide another opportunity to give you the update so that you're familiar and aware with what the, the residents are hearing and, and just understand the, the project in general. Um, so uh, just a little bit of background, folks saw some work going on there uh, for the last two years at the bridge, uh, 131. Uh, I'm sure uh, all of us had different questions about that. That was really the beginning of uh, getting uh, set up to perform the project. We'll talk more in details about that. I do have a, a short presentation. Mike, was there anything else you wanted to add before we get into it? All right. So we'll dive right into it. Uh, it's open and informal. Please, as uh, we get into the, the discussion, if there's any questions, uh, let me know and, and uh, we'll talk them through. So next slide, Mike. Uh, we did intro, project overview. Folks uh, should be familiar. Uh, for the sakes of, of discussion, we'll give a high level high level summary. What the project is going to consist of is uh, dredging PCB removal, uh, dredging and capping for the entire length of the river from the Alcoa East Plant outfall down to the confluence with the St. Lawrence River. It's about 7.2 miles uh, and we'll talk about uh, uh, details of that as we get into this. We'll also talk about what to expect during the work, how that work is going to roll out, what, uh, uh, what the impacts are going to be to folks, uh, and, and just in summary, how the project's going to go. We'll talk about monitoring that's going to be done during the project. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, monitoring that gets done both in air, water, and soil, uh, so that we understand how our controls are on the project as we do the cleanup and handle the impacted wastes. Uh, and then we'll close with uh, just some, some common sense type uh, points that we'd like to make about uh, safety as we're out on the river uh, performing the work. So, uh, in summary folks, you might have seen this before. This is really an aerial view of the river. Uh, St. Lawrence River is up here, the Grass River. You work its way down into town, and here's the Alcoa uh, West Plant. Um, what the project entails, a uh, little more detail, the lower portion of the river, the river's been divided up into what we call transects, just big chunks of river that we use to identify our location as we're talking amongst the team, uh, into 72 uh, divided pieces. Um, so transect 1 here, transect 72 here. From transect uh, T21 to the end, T72, the cap is going to consist of sand and topsoil. From T1 to T21 is going to be the same sand and topsoil, but it's also going to re receive a, an armor layer. That's because of the studies that have been done to show that uh, when the ice damming has occurred in the past, the scouring has affected the bottom. So we'll, we'll put, uh, this is the section of the river that is uh, open to that. So in that area, we're going to put on uh, an armor protective coating that uh, will prevent that ice scour from occurring. Meanwhile, as I said earlier, along the shoreline, and it, it doesn't show up perfectly clear here, but these yellow areas along the shore are where the dredging and impacted sediment removal is going to take place. So we'll go into the first here, remove the impacted material along the shore, that's near shore, out to about five foot of water where we've identified the impacts. Uh, remove that material, that material will get uh, brought by barge 
up to the staging area where the 131 bridge is. There that material will be solidified, handled, uh, processed, and uh, loaded into dump trucks, brought it back up to the plant uh, for disposal at the on-site landfill. That should be about the first year of work, and then, then we'll get that at those areas backfilled, brought back to original grade, uh, and that should complete the work for the first year, and then the next two to maybe three years we'll spend placing the cap in the river. Um, so work that, that we've done uh, in preparation really for the last year, we've gone into uh, the landfill uh, at the Alcoa West plant and prepared it for receiving the waste that'll come out. Uh, that was done last year. Uh, meanwhile, as we've talked about briefly and as folks can see, we've uh, completed preparations at the staging area. So this is area is where all the waste will be coming to. Uh, we've got a large bulkhead wall for ships, uh, barges, uh, both filled with waste to come in, be offloaded. Meanwhile, clean material barges will be loaded uh, in the future for placing cap material downriver. The asphalt area that you see as you drive by down there is double lined. There's asphalt and HDPE really a heavy plastic liner that's welded. Uh, that's where all the impacted waste will be handled, processed, as well as this tiered area will receive, will, uh, you'll see set up in there a water treatment system for capturing all the impacted water from the project. That gets pre-treated before it goes, gets sent to the Alcoa plant, where then it goes through an entirely addition uh, treatment before discharge uh, back to the river. And other work that was done, uh, we also went to an, uh, an area down around Transact T27. So this is really downriver of the Alcoa 131, the 131 bridge. Uh, and we've done an upland area called, we call it the unnamed trip. We did the, the upland area of that area uh, this past summer, there's another area down along the, the river that we'll need to be getting. Other work you might have seen from the Alcoa Bridge, <coughs> work going on down along the shoreline. These are two other additional upland areas right along the shoreline that we've identified impacts. We found it was going to be easier to put together an approach that we can get them from the dry land side. Uh, so we've gone in and, and done that work. We've done one on the downstream side of the Alcoa Bridge. Uh, we're in the midst of restoring that area. There's a little bit of work left there to do. You'll see in the spring. Meanwhile, on the upstream side of the Alcoa Bridge is another location that we'll, you'll see similar work done. <coughs> Lastly, you would have seen late in the fall uh, a little bit of traffic and barge traffic on the river and that was just some early placement testing that we wanted to do placing cap material in the soft sediment to understand how that soft sediment was going to react and really condense and compact underneath the weight of uh, the material so it was important for us to get that in last fall so we can take advantage of, of the downtime now over winter as that settling uh, continues well, and we've got all kinds of monitors there in the river to tell us what's happening with that sediment. So this was, uh, even though things are quiet, there's a lot of data that continues to be collected from, from that effort that will be useful to us down the road. So, uh, looking at what's next. Um, so for the last couple weeks, uh, myself and the, uh, the representative from the contractor, who is Brennan, out of uh, Wisconsin has been in town and we've been going uh, to the, the uh, residents who live up and down the river that are in an area or been identified where immediately adjacent to their property in the river uh, is we need to do sediment removal work and there may be docks in the way or trees that uh, are going to be impacted uh, 
for us to gain access to that, that material. Um, so we've, one of the things that the contractor identified, there's tree trimming and tree removal work that's got to happen. They put together an approach that uh, is going to allow them uh, to, to go out and use the winter time, work from the ice, do the tree trimming that we need. They've actually subcontracted the work locally to Putney. Uh, so they're going to be out there. There's about 90 plus trees that are currently on a list based on a survey that they've done. They're going to go and start uh, tree trimming, trimming back branches so that it, they can get access to the river and uh, the river sediment in the spring. That work's actually going to start next week. Uh, we've got uh, Putney coming in and you will see that uh, some work has been done down at the staging area to open that up and prep for that. And have you marked those trees yet? They've been uh, marked, Steve, with ribbons right now. Uh, over the next uh, couple weeks, contractors going to go down now with a surveyor and identify just exactly how far uh, back into the tree they need to trim in order to be able to give them access for their equipment. So there are ribbons in the trees. Uh, now we'll identify how much of the specific branches or the trees need to be trimmed back. There will also be some added trees to the list. We know right now we've got about 90 tagged. As they get out there with their survey ident surveyor identifying exact limits, that may bring into view that there's another uh, six or ten trees to add to the list. Um, so that effort's starting. Uh, meanwhile, there's also, uh, along with the, the tree removal, there's going to be docks that uh, have to be uh, relocated. Uh, we, we're also talking that through with each individual resident. Um, there's about uh, roughly 30, 35 docks that'll have to be shifted out of the way. Uh, the contractor's plan is many of them are floating docks. Uh, simply float them upstream out of the way, allowing access for the equipment to come and go. Uh, and then come back in once the area has gone through Confirmation sampling, excavation is complete, uh, backfill back to uh, starting initial grades, uh, and then at the end of the construction season, put the box, uh, the docks back into place. Uh, and, will, will that be area by area, or are you going to clean out a whole section of docks? How do you? <coughs> we got it. Is it going to be the entire boating season, or? Yeah, <laughs> what we've told uh, the individual residents that are going to be impacted, Sam, is um, the contractor is going to go in, do all the dock removals up front so that he can progress down through uh, his sediment removal work without starting and stopping. So uh, the answer to your question, they'll, t they'll start the removal work uh, in April as soon as they can get on the water, get all of the docks out of the way take the, the season performing the removal work, the sampling, the restoration and backfill, and then at the end of the season put the docks back into place. So it is going to impact for the entire season as we sit here now. What are you going to do for those that are displaced? Uh, we're, we're taking into individual discussions with them, Sam. There is a uh, uh, a dollar settlement that we've offered to them, uh, and it's been based really on uh, the the, uh, the cost of a, a slip, say at Barnhart, uh, for a 20-foot boat. We've made an offer uh, along the lines to, to folks that were impacted that way. Uh, another way they could use it, if they didn't want to use it for uh, a dock, it's for cash for offset uh, trailering costs uh, for fuel to come and go. Um, so that's some prep work that will get uh, be done on the river up and down. Uh, meanwhile, the contractor uh, starting in March, we're going to see an awful lot of equipment moving to the site, uh, both setting up at the staging area and building their in-river work platforms uh, and then as soon as uh, 
we can, site conditions allow, we'll begin that upland remedial work that we talked about up near the Alcoa Bridge and other places up and down the river. What's that work look like? Uh, we talked about near shore sediment removal that will happen in the areas that were identified on, on, the, on a figure. Um, that material, so here you, you've got an, uh, an example of uh, the excavation work. Material will come up out of the, out of the, the river bottom in a clamshell to be placed into a barge. That, the material gets dewatered basically as it travels in the barge. That, that barge moves up the river. It gets offloaded at the staging area. There's going to be all kinds of equipment that will take and process that material at the staging area, get it dewatered, stabilized, get it to a point where it's uh, acceptable for landfilling. Uh, there's all kinds of tests that get done to, to make sure it's structurally strong enough to be landfilled. Uh, it'll be amended if needed, then loaded into dump trucks, taken up to the landfill. There'll be a contractor set up to, to place the material in the landfill. Uh, meanwhile, as I said, there's also a water treatment system, pre-treatment of the water. There's standards and criteria that need to get met for that water before it can be discharged to the Alcoa, our conic uh, wastewater treatment plant for, again, further uh, treatment before discharge. Material gets taken to landfill. Um, one of the things that the contractors proposed in his approach this contractor in his approach for capping, uh, if you recall that the capping uh, model showed it uh, to be consist of the first layer is going to be sand. This contractor is going to move that sand into place hydraulically. So what he's saying, what that means is he'll have an on-site staging area, get the material into a slurry, and then have a couple miles of pipe out into the river that's taking and depositing the material on the river bottom. It's all very controlled uh, as far as uh, uh, the depth and the placement of it. Uh, but rather than run seven miles of pipe out, he's proposed to take in, in a downstream area uh, on the uh, southern shore. He's talked to some property owners there, and he's negotiating uh, access and wants to set up a second staging area uh, for for just what I described. So we'll have two staging areas to work from for placement of the cap material. Uh, meanwhile, after uh, the excavation and sediment removal work gets completed, backfill and site restoration, and then on the heels of that, we'll actually start the cap placement in the river. Timing-wise, um, just a large timeline that shows this year uh, the work that we expect to do. Uh, we're going to try and start the tree trimming, uh, as I said, next week. That should be about two to three weeks worth of work. Uh, and then in March, the contractors can mow and set up with the hopes that uh, we can get into the river in April, start the dock removal, and then roll into the other on-river work activities. That'll take us right through, really, at the full construction season to get that amount of work done. Here's a, a timeline laid out in a different way, looking at the aerial photo of the river and taking the sections of the river that the contractor's projecting he, how his project's going to sequence. Now, typically, in general, we're working upstream to downstream with this remedial work. That's how you want to do it. There is one caveat to that in that uh, we're going to start in April at T6, which is really just above uh, the 131 uh, staging area, uh, or just below the Alcoa Bridge, in between, below the Alcoa Bridge. Uh, we're going to start there, which leaves us about five transects above. The reason we have to do that is because uh, the sturgeon have a, a spawning window that uh, we're not allowed to be disturbing that section of the river. Uh, that's actually lifted, I think, June 15th, right? So 
contractor is going to start here in April, progress down through. He thinks he'll get down below the staging area a little bit by uh, the, the 1st of June. Then at, after June 15 strikes, he'll be working here, jump back, get T1 to 6 completed, and then come back down and continue down through the river through the rest of the year. That's one year? Yeah. That's one year for impacted sediment removal. Now, we've all been around the environmental cleanup work enough to know that um, this is based on volumes and things that we know based on the, that have been developed based on data that we have from the river. One of the things that happens, Sam, much like it did at the GM site, uh, we'll go in based uh, contractor, the design engineers have identified impacted limits uh, depth-wise and laterally that uh, are represented by the samples that have been taken. We'll go in and remove that, that known material then we go back and do confirmation samples, wait for that data to come back, and that data then really drives if additional removal is needed. So um, this is based on volumes and what's known today. Uh, there is some additional uh, time that's built into the schedule to address the potential for over-excavation or increasing volumes, but that's a finite amount of time, uh, let's say a few weeks, additional weeks that the contractor's got built into his schedule. Um, we hope that that's uh, enough additional time to, to allow us to still complete the work. So that's just to identify the areas of high PCBs along the shoreline? Uh, well, it's from the water line. We're going from the water line five feet out. Five, feet out, five foot of depth. So I've been looking for the map that indicates those certain areas. It's not the entire shoreline, correct? Correct. Um, do we have a map of that? And is, so the unaffected areas, are they going to be allowed to keep their docks there? Or are you going to take out the affected areas? That's exactly okay. right. Yeah. So is there a map that identifies those affected areas that need to be excavated along the shoreline? There are design drawings. That, that we got that are, and that's from those that we based uh, who we're going to contact and the discussions that we've been having with the residents. Okay. Um, that's what's that's what's driving those. So we've talked to all the residents that already that are going to be impacted with their docks being removed. Uh, we've talked to probably 90% of them okay. at this point. There's more to follow, uh, and there's probably. Um, there's several businesses that uh, we get to, to talk to also that own property along the shoreline, but 90% of the residences at this point have received either an envelope or had one on one service. Okay. Uh, I guess, you know, living on the river, sure. and all my neighbors, I'm sure, are going to contact, you know, ask me some questions as well. So I just want to, you know, kind of know what's what's going on in my neighborhood anyway and, you know, throughout the river. Right. Um, I think there's a spot in the uh, eddy, kind of the corner by me, uh, that's effective. I'm not sure if my shoreline downstream is. It, it, it's actually, yours isn't. Okay. I, I can tell you that as, as well as Steve's is not. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, I, I can, Offline, I can show you a, a more detailed okay, area uh, as far as people okay. right around you. Sure. What are, last, or what are you planning your hours of work for the, uh, Yeah. So uh, hours of work are basically contractors going to work 12, hour, uh, 12 hours a day, six days a week for the removal work. And then when we get into the capping, that's going to be a 24-hour operation, six days a week. Our intent here is to try and reduce the impact by reducing the amount of time that we're impacting folks. So um, that, that's been our focus. Work six days a week, uh, 12 hours on removal. That will get us through, based on the contractor's production rate calculations, that'll get us through the removal work in a season. Uh, again, 
understanding that there's potential for increasing volumes based on data. Um, and then the, the capping work for, for two years after that. Dan, are you going to use local uh, employment? Yeah, the, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the tree trimming is being performed by Putney. Uh, the contractor isn't a, a local contractor qualified to take the overall project on, uh, clearly. But uh, Brennan from Wisconsin has subcontracted uh, with local contractors to do like uh, land support work, uh, Charlie. So there, there'll be actually Paris has been subcontracted to perform uh, a lot of the work on the land base side as well as up at the landfill. Is, is that fair? Correct. I, I've estimated probably 60 to 80 local. Oh, good. As well as the, 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 the out of town contractors is obviously contacted uh, local resources also. I'd say on his, uh, on his equipment this year, on the barges, he probably had 30 to 50 percent of the local. Yeah. So, and that's just one, or just a couple pieces of equipment. So. I've seen the barge go by a couple of times. Looks like quite a healthy amount of material on that. What does is, what is that hold anyway? The, the barge? Ton, I want to. I want to say it was just over a hundred ton. Yeah. That that setup that they had there, Sam. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I got a question for you. Um, have you guys spoke to the emergency services, fire and rescue? Uh, we did last year. Uh, there's going to be more organized discussions, uh, but we also um, have uh, one of our our health and safety manager for the project is also uh, emergency dive team leader. So he's taking communications back also. But there is going to be a, a formal, organized reach out to them. And as, as we get closer and have firm dates to discuss, we'll go through that with them also. And I believe there's going to be a need, especially when you get into your 24-hour operations, that there was, should be some serious talk with the scene rescue because of manpower issues and stuff that they should maybe scheduling reasons. So if you guys could meet the fire and rescue, I, I think it's really, really important. Yeah, we agree, and it's it's on our list. Uh, we're also up front going to be performing uh, emergency drills, and we'll we'll want that uh, local uh, emergency uh, crews to be part of that uh, if they're able to. And it's maybe as simple as staging their boat somewhere. I don't know. You guys can figure that all out. Though. I mean, I just hope that you guys sit down with both fire and rescue. Because that is going to be quite an operation, especially when you're dealing with 24 hour docks. You're right. Yeah. I mean, even the Prescott's dive boat is, don't, you, don't they normally keep that in Barnhart? The bigger boat they have in Barnhart, but they also have that little one they can put in somewhere or stage it. I don't know how they want to work that. It's definitely going to have to be talked about. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Sure. All right, um, what to expect during in river work? We've talked about the tree trimming. Now, in the event that there's an issue out on the, the ice, working from the ice this year, and, and rest assured, there's all kinds of safety protocols that are in place to and monitoring that'll take place while they're out there on the river, on the ice. Uh, in the event uh, weather changes and we're, we're not able to access areas we need to, it'll also, uh, there may be some tree trimming that'll take place from the land. Um, uh, dock removal work, we talked about the removal, That's that uh, we should be able to do all from the water. Uh, sections can be placed up on, some property owners want the docks placed up on their property. Uh, others are fine with us just floating it uh, out of the way and to be reinstalled at a later time. Uh, then we'll also talk and be seeing floodplain soil removal uh, in limited areas and then the near shore sediment. Um, what to expect during the work? Uh, possible noise and associated uh, controls and monitoring. So we've had a lot of discussions with uh, the contractor on this uh, to try and, and reduce our, our impact to the local community. Um, recognizing this is a picture of the, the staging area at night. Uh, our issues there obviously are noise and light. Uh, that's why we've gone to a 12-hour operation on the river during excavation. Uh, 
as and the, the there is one uh, potential uh, adjustment to that in that if we get uh, a large volume of water that needs to be treated uh, and we're maxing maximizing our, our storage uh, we may need to go to a 24-hour operation for water treatment that's a, a fairly quiet uh, just a few motors and pumps that run operation uh, but what we would also do and, and Steve we've talked to the neighbors as we've made this uh, uh, outreach for the dock and, and tree removal that if there are issues that if, if the lights uh, mainly are, are uh, happen to be shining in your houses please let us know we'll make adjustments uh, to the extent that we can and actually we spoke with uh, folks over there last year and, and led to some some good adjustments so uh, we'll, our focus is, is to try and reduce the impact uh, to the extent that we can and still maintain a safe work area obviously where the guys are Contractors also taking a look at different types of backup alarms on equipment so that we can reduce that kind of impact. Um, and at this point, I, we should also realize we're past the noisy piece of work for, for several years now that the sheet pile wall is installed. Uh, there will be site security uh, present at the staging area as well as uh, the contractors up is going to be responsible for his uh, securing his equipment out on the river. Um, and folks have seen all kinds of road signage and uh, similar signs will be out on floating signs out on the river. Monitoring, uh, there's all kinds of air monitoring and water monitoring and soil sampling that gets done. The purpose of that is to understand and, and identify, uh, or I should say manage the, uh, the uh, <coughs> confirm that the contractor's got control of the waste as he's performing the project. Um, so what you're seeing here is folks will be out on the water taking uh, water samples at several different locations on a daily basis. Meanwhile, there'll be all kinds of air monitoring equipment staged at different places and we'll show talk to that in, uh, uh, in a couple, another slide. But for the air, we're monitoring PCBs, dust, and volatile organic compounds. In the water, we're monitoring for PCBs and turbidity. Uh, and we've got corrective action levels for, for both those, for all of those constituents. Air monitoring. So there's air monitoring that is going to go full time at the staging area, up at the landfill, and other background areas. Uh, so there's, we've got the areas of work uh, surrounded uh, as, as uh, the impacted material gets, uh, gets managed. Likewise, we've got water column monitoring that's going to take place. We've got upriver, uh, so we understand background, downriver monitoring, uh, and this is a mobile station that will follow the dredge operation in front of the dredge operation as it progresses down the river. As far as the air monitoring goes, I'll tell you how sensitive this equipment is. We didn't pick up on any PCB remediation work this year at all as far as uh, PCBs or any, any type of uh, contaminants of that sort. The only hits that I actually got this year were sort of from some local fires as far as maybe Hatfield. That smoke set off the alarms all, all the way over to where we're at. So they're, they're fairly sensitive. <coughs> And then in addition to that, uh, the water column sampling, we're monitoring at water intakes. And there's a water intake at the Alcoa East plant, as well as uh, down on St. Regis Mohawk Drive water intake. There'll be daily samples collected there. <coughs> Lastly, uh, we are, there's one of the focuses, uh, one of the main focus that we've had in designing the project is that we not uh, prevent use of the river as we're performing the project. Uh, the contractors work with us the way he's designed his work platforms uh, so that the river continues and will continue to, to be open 
the traffic as we're performing the work. Uh, the one thing we are we're doing, asking, requesting the public, uh, understand that the, the, this is big equipment. It does not move quickly. It's not very agile. Uh, and there's a lot of work activity that, that folks are out on the decks for. We'd ask you as you pass the equipment, please reduce your speed, try not to create too much of a wake, and maintain uh, as much distance as you can. You will see uh, safety floats and barriers notifying the, the passing public on the river of where that work activity is taking place. Um, lastly, with regards to swimming, we're asking folks to please use common sense. Uh, a blanket uh, statement would be, uh, there'd be no reason we wouldn't advise swimming immediately downstream of, uh, of a dredging operations. Uh, and in addition to that, New York State Department of Health is putting together uh, a leaflet, uh, general information uh, and precautions to be taken. Uh, for swimming uh, while dredging operations that are, are ongoing. Lastly, a list of uh, folks uh, and phone numbers for contacts. Uh, this, this is also up on the Grass River website. All of these uh, individuals are identified as well as their contact information.